Episode 19, The Airborne Identity. Originally posted November 21, 2012. When the first wave of G.I. Joe or Real American Hero figures first came out in 1982, there really weren't too many uniform variations from character to character. Aside from a few exceptions, almost the entire team was decked out in varying shades of green. The next wave of Joes that came out in 1983 was a little bit more creative and unique, with more branches of the military being represented as well as more specific environments and designations filled out. We got ourselves a Navy SEAL, an Arctic Trooper, an Explosive Ordnance Disposal Specialist, a Medic, and even a Marine that inexplicably looked more like a member of the village people. As was the norm for most boys my age, when presented with a lineup of all new characters, I immediately sought out who my favorite would be of the new bunch. This was usually determined by one simple criteria, who looked the coolest? And that honor fell upon the new helicopter assault trooper, Franklin E. Talltree, codenamed Airborne. His card art just really stood out from all the others. I mean, they all look cool for the most part, but Airborne, dangling from a rope descending onto the firefight below, just beat everyone else. Plus, the bare-chested tattooed marine with a thick handlebar mustache kind of scared me back then. Anyway, Airborne didn't feature much in the cartoons or comics and was pretty much lost in the shadow of his more popular wave mates, while Doc, Snowjob, Torpedo, Tripwire, and of course, Gung Ho became household G.I. Joe names, Airborne was somehow left behind. But that didn't change anything for me. From the day I laid my eyes on him, and even after other countless Joes were introduced, Airborne has remained my favorite Joe. Like I said, in the cartoon, he was more often than not a background character. He was even drawn differently from his action figure. But he did thankfully feature prominently in one episode. And it was one hell of an episode. Okay, actually, most Joe fans peg it as one of the worst. But I liked it, for obvious reasons. Basically, Airborne turned out to be more than your average Joe, as he possessed some sort of extrasensory perception, or ESP, and shared some sort of psychic bond with his younger brother, Tommy. So as the story goes, Tommy was recruited, sorry, kidnapped by Cobra as part of their plan to conquer the world using psychics. No, really. Like I said, it wasn't one of the best remembered or groundbreaking episodes from the cartoon. But it did heavily feature my favorite Joe, and it managed to make Airborne's character more unique. Plus, he was voiced by Peter Cullen, who is best known as the voice of the Autobot leader Optimus Prime. How cool is that? Anyway, when the 25th anniversary G.I. Joe toy line started gaining steam in 2007 and 2008, I waffled back and forth on whether to start collecting it. At this point, I was just a hardcore Transformer collector, which I justified to myself was okay because they were interactive. I could fiddle around and transform them. You know, something to exercise the brain. But to buy something that would just stand on the shelf? That was a whole new mental hurdle for me to get over. And so, despite G.I. Joe being my main toy line as a kid, I would just admire these new ones from afar. Until one day, during a lull in Transformer product releases, I entertained the thought of, you know, they would never make an updated 25th anniversary Airborne. But if they did, I would have to get it. But yeah, they'd never make one. After which, I promptly googled 25th Anniversary Airborne for fun, and as if Hasbro was reading my mind, there he was in all his updated 25th Anniversary glory, Airborne. And that was the end of my resolve. I immediately found an Airborne in one of my local toy shops and picked him up, along with the Dragonfly helicopter pilot Wild Bill, whom Airborne is usually partnered with, another childhood favorite, the Ranger Beachhead, and a Cobra Paratrooper because he looked cool. And the rest is history. Ask any hardcore G.I. Joe collector to list down the best figures from the 25th anniversary line, and Airborne will most likely come up in most lists. All biases aside, he really was one of the best figures produced for that line. He wasn't swimming in accessories like later figures, but he had just the right amount of stuff and detailed really well to finally make him the well-deserved standout from his toy wave. Anyway, in 2009, a more mature cartoon miniseries called G.I. Joe Resolute was released. It was called Mature because the writers promised realistic battles, no lasers, and actual character deaths. A few months before its release, some character designs surfaced online and I was quite surprised to see that Airborne was included in these preliminary sketches. Of course, the promise of Joe's dying and an obscure character like Airborne being included in the series made me fear for the worst. Luckily, Airborne ended up surviving the series doing what he does best, playing the part of a non-speaking background character. 
the fact that he was included and not killed off got me excited enough to do my own airborne custom based on the Resolute design. In my opinion, it had enough subtle differences from the original to merit a custom. As for more official releases, despite not being one of the most popular Joe characters, Airborne was surprisingly included in the toy lines for both live-action G.I. Joe movies, despite not actually being in them. For 2009's Rise of Cobra, the pilot Air Raid was released, and despite looking nothing like the original Airborne and having a different code name, he was identified as Franklin E. Talltree on his file card. So that counts as an Airborne figure in my book. And then finally, for 2013's Retaliation, Airborne was released as part of a Joe Tactical Ninja 3-pack along with Agent Mouse and Snake Eyes. Thankfully, this version, while definitely modernized, still shared a similar color palette with the vintage figure to pass more convincingly as Airborne. Now in 2020, Hasbro launched an all-new 6-inch scale G.I. Joe line called G.I. Joe Classified. And in just a couple of years, it has easily become one of their best-selling and most popular lines. But I've managed to not get in on classifieds for three main reasons. First is that I already have a huge 3.75 G.I. Joe collection. Second, my funds are limited and I may risk the status of my marriage if I get into another toy line. And third, they have yet to release an Airborne in the line. If they do, well, let's cross that bridge if we get there. So am I the only Joe fan out there who has Airborne as their favorite real American hero? Please let me know if I'm not alone. Comment below and tell me your story. Thanks for checking out Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. For more stories, please like and subscribe to this channel. Click on the notification bell for updates or visit my website at storiesfromthetoyshelf.com and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until the next one.